Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. Elantris was the first book by Brandon Sanderson I had ever read. I was completely taken in immediately by the summary, and then when I read the prologue, that last line in there, Eternity Ended 10 Years Ago, I was like... I'm in. I'm completely hooked. It reminded me of the opening line from The Gunslinger that Stephen King wrote. Um, the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Like, that opening line is so compelling. Like, you just need to know what happens next. Like, that's exactly how I feel about this tagline at the end of the prologue. Brandon did a great job at just explaining the consistency of the world just like through simple little prologue and then get you hooked in on what's going on. But before I get into too much detail about the book, let's sum it up. So, the story follows three main characters. Prince Raiden of Averlon, Princess Sereni of Teod, and the priest Hraithim of Fjordel. At the beginning of the story, Raiden is cursed with an ancient transformation known as the Sheod. And, this, and is secretly exiled to the city of Elantris just days before his betrothed, Princess Sereni of Teod, arrives for their wedding. As Raiden tries to avoid gangs, keep his sanity, and unite with the people of or unite the people of Elantris, Sereni must cope with the loss of her husband to be and try to save Aerilon from Raytham, a priest, uh, a priest tasked with converting all of Aerilon to the religion of Fjordale or dooming it to destruction. That in and of itself, like that, I think that may have been the same summary that I read when I first read the book, because that even, it makes me want to go back and at least listen to the audiobook or something, because it's so good. It's a great intro to the Cosmere, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, it was my intro to the Cosmere, so I don't really have much of a, you know, scale to judge it by, but, so like I was saying, this is my first experience, this is my first exposure to Brandon Sanderson, and the idea of the shield and becoming an Elantrian like was so cool to me. The idea that you could just be randomly chosen and given near immortality and godlike power and all this stuff like it was really cool. Like I was saying, and then the way it's all explained, and then what you learn later, you know, assuming that you get obsessed with the Cosmere the way that I did, then like the stuff that you learn later is like ah, it all makes so much more sense. And then it's like ah, like but this is neither here nor there. Um, so this book actually worked as my intro to the Cosmere because when I finished it, I was desperately searching for a sequel. I thought there was like maybe another one. Maybe this is a series I hadn't heard of because it was so good and so compelling. And they only like, you know, like got every, you know, I don't want to spoil it exactly. But what happens at the end lends itself to a sequel. And I was really hoping for a sequel. And Brandon had said something about the sequel later. But case like point being there was no sequel when I was looking for it. So as a result, I found other Cosmere stuff. I found Mistborn, and then I found um, the first two Stormlight books. Was, that was around the time I got in. The first two had already been released. And, um, and basically, I just, I, I consumed them. I just, I just, <laughs> like, it was, it was immediately that. But about um, Elantris, though. So despite the fact that I wasn't really into fantasy at the time, even when I first found this book, like it converted me immediately. I, one of the issues that I actually tend to have with fantasy is the way it's paced. Most of those books, like most fantasy books to me that I've read at least, like were very slow, very dragging, and then like you jump to other characters and they have nothing to do with what the main plot is unless it's probably, you know, going to circle back around or something like that. And, like I just had issues with it or whatever, like, and it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. But when I read this, like the pacing of it is so clean and so easy. Brandon doesn't use any flowery writing or anything like that. His, his language is very clear and concise. He's just like telling it. He has very straightforward writing style and is very accessible. So I went into this and just went through it, just like consumed it so quickly. Like it was, it took no, like I didn't really take any breaks or any, I mean, you know, days and all that kind of thing. But like, I didn't take the same way that I would in any other book that I was kind of getting bored by or was less interested by. I just put down and maybe come back then, you know, jump back in that chapter I was in or something like that. So I was like really pleasantly surprised and I realized like the pacing in this book is really nice. The language he's using is really good. It's like flowing and everything. There's no confusion. I don't have to like reinterpret it in my head in order to, you know, understand what they're talking about or anything like that. 
And apart from that, each of the reveals that Brandon works into the story fit so perfectly. You can feel them coming before they do. And then, like, you still feel accomplished. Like, you figured it out before it was revealed, even though it could probably only happen, like, a second before. I love when writers are able to do that. When they can time their reveals and basically get the reader to kind of get there just a second before they reveal the information. Like, I think it's so, it's so difficult to do, I think. But it's also very very satisfying when it's done because it makes you feel like oh i figured it out but it's also like ah, oh, i saw what you did there like so you can super appreciate the writing that much more speaking of the reveals there's this great heel turn towards the end of the book that like i saw it coming well i wanted it to happen more than having seen it coming like because i i was i just wanted it to, i wanted this person to kind of switch sides or whatever but it just like when it all started to happen I kind of was like, okay, well, maybe something. And it was like the next thing I have, like, oh, that was great. But then, like, the twist just, like, kind of happens and stuff. I was, I felt like, I don't know, like, I, I felt smarter than I did before or something. It's like, yeah, I figured it out right before it happened. I thought this was something I would only think about. But holy crap, Brandon's thinking about it, too. So, <laughs> it was something like that, you know? Uh, um, apart from the pacing and, like, the um, magic system and stuff that he creates, which is awesome. Like, Brandon, it, it doesn't even need to be said. Brandon is basically famous for his magic systems, apart from just generically being a great writer. But his magic systems are unbelievable. And that was partially also why this book hooked me so strongly. Because I don't know what it is about writing magic symbols and making it happen. I, I dig that something terrible. Um, apart from the great pacing that Brandon does in this book, he does a really good job with his characters. The characterizations of these people like you they feel so real and like they feel alive and like lived in i don't know if that's the right term but like they feel like real people to me and it's an interesting thing that brandon was able to do here because i haven't seen it much normally this would be a complaint but his main character doesn't really change he doesn't like he he has a story arc but he doesn't, you know, like most characters they'll grow and like change and be you know a better person or you know a different person you know something like that Rayodin doesn't really change. He starts off as this great prince who is like really ready to take the throne, who's going to make some changes, who's going to like do good stuff and like it's just legit solid stand up guy. And when he gets struck with the shield, he basically is the same person. He's just in a separate situation. But I felt like what Brandon was able to do is because we see him for like literally a second before he goes to Elantris and um all the information that we get later implies that he was like a really good prince and like he was very ready to take the throne and like was going to change up all the stuff and do really good stuff and, um but it, it could have just been you know idealistic kid ide you know idealistic youth per youth 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 i don't know like an idealistic person kind of thing like that and but like having actually no real plans or anything so when he got to elantris and was trying to like unite these people and do like help them in any way that he could and all this kind of stuff I was like okay like he's literally putting his money where his mouth is like he's really actively doing it. even in the worst situation than he could have ever been in not even being prince anymore like presumed dead like because that's they basically say you're dead when you become uh elantrian after the shale and stuff and um he still was able to be that person so despite that he didn't have you know dramatic character growth or character change or anything like that the progression from who he was into like who he is like it goes from concept to reality kind of thing so i think it's an arc, but it's not a you know it's not a typical arc. So I think I think it, Brandon deserves a lot of credit for being able to create a character who doesn't change a lot except physically, and still is able to be incredibly compelling. Oh, and as I said, this is my first Brandon book, so of course I then learned about the Cosmere, and after I learned more about the Cosmere, about like what happened in the cognitive realm and like all this kind of stuff about going on around cell and whatnot, it just made me like retroactively appreciate this book even more because the stuff we learn later you can apply it to this book and then contextually it just makes it like whoa <laughs> something else brandon does really well in this book with his characterizations is um one of these characters galadon 
is not from the same country. So he has different idioms and different turns of phrases and things that Rayodin don't even know because, you know, he's not from that place and everything. And Brandon does a really good job of using these turns of phrases in an organic enough way that we understand it perfectly with context clues. And he does like a lot of, um, like, instead of like saying, oh, my God, or something like that, they'll say merciful domai because that's their God and stuff like that. Brandon does a really good job of changing like expressions and doing things like that that match this world and are unique enough and it i liked it in this one but as i got more into the cosmere i was like oh he's getting even better after learning what we do learn about the cosmere and about what happened on cell about the fact that there's technically no gods there because the two shards that were there you know they're gone or whatever and um it 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 kind of hit me the only planet well, I don't know. There's probably multiple others that, like, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the only shard world that doesn't have shards anymore is the only one that's dealing with religious war. So I thought that was really cool. Like, the irony is you can't point to the... So, like, neither one of them can ever be right. But if we ever get that sequel, then maybe we'll get to learn more about the Fjordel and, like, um, um, Yadith and stuff. Like, is he, like... I wonder, like, is he something? Like, there's got to be something more to it. Knowing Brandon, there's definitely some interesting random Cosmere stuff to do with it. So, I'm really hyped about learning more about that. So, by now, I probably sound like a broken record just singing Brandon's praises over and over. His characters are good. His magic system is good. The plot is good. The pacing's good. All of it's good. But if you don't like, like, political intrigue, like some of that Game of Thrones type stuff where they're just, you know talking and scheming and all that kind of stuff you probably won't like it too much and if you are a big like battle person this book has like one more or less battle at the end and it's not even a you know big thing but there's i think there's enough action in satisfying me but there it's not like a you know it's not lord of the rings or something where there's actual giant battles or anything like that or even his later cosmere stuff it's not like that even though there kind of is a giant army in sort of a war. <laughs> but point being, it's not a super action-heavy war-type situation thing. So if you're really looking for like heavy action and all that kind of stuff, you might be a little disappointed in this one. But the rest of it is so good, I, I defy you to find a way to dislike it. Like, I really do, because it's so good. It was, the, it was the perfect, like, you know, launching point for me into the Cosmere. I can't recommend Elantris or Brandon Sanderson's books enough. Like, The Cosmere is an incredible creation that he made. And it's coming along so nicely. The stuff that we're getting, it's it's, whew, it's so good. Um, but with that being said, I guess I'm going to leave it here and ask you guys, have you read Elantris? If you did, like, what was your favorite parts about it? What kind of stuff about it you like? What didn't you like about it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button too to help the channel grow. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.